Hello, I'm Pamela Butcher and I'm delighted to be part of the Scottish Silly Squad supporting Scottish libraries and the very exciting Summer Reading Challenge. And I'm very lucky this year because one of my books has made it onto the fantastic Summer Reading Challenge list. And this book is written by me and illustrated by the wonderful Becca Moore and it's called Break Town Bunnies. Oh, look at these bunnies. Now, I know what you're thinking, bunnies, oh, so cute. Well, not always. These bunnies are a little bit scary and what's scary about these bunnies is that there's just so many of them. So I'm gonna read it to you and I might use some silly voices because we're all part of the Scottish Silly Squad here. Oh, I'll let you see, look, Wiggles Bottom Primary, break time bunnies. That's my evil scary bunny face, I need my bunny ears. I don't have my bunny ears today, so I've worn my silly squad ears. I hope that's okay. Woo, my alien antenna. So there we go, Wiggles Bottom Primary, Break Time Bunnies, and I'm going to introduce you to the class. Look, there's a teacher, Miss Riley. That was the name of my teacher when I was at primary school. And there's lots of pupils in her class. I'll tell you a secret. When I'm not being an author and not being a mummy, well, I'm always being a mummy, but when I'm doing something else, I'm being a teacher and some of these pupils are named after the pupils that I teach. Hello, hi Megan. Now, I'm going to read you a sneak peek of the brand new book, Breakdown Bunnies. Are you ready? Are your bums comfy? Are your arms comfy? Are you clear your throat? <coughs> or I just need to do that because I'm reading. And here we go. On Monday, as soon as we got to our classroom, Susie Keys pointed out of the window and gasped, can you do your best dramatic gas for me on one, two, three? <gasps> that was totally rubbish. Let's do it again. One, two, three. <gasps> that was much better. On Monday, as soon as we got to our classroom, Susie Keys pointed out the window and gasped. So we all ran over to see what the gasping was about. And that's when we saw that there were four bunnies sitting on the grassy bit in the playground. And they were so cute. Gavin Ross pointed to one of the bunnies and said that it was the coolest bunny that he'd ever seen because it had a little black patch on one eye and it looked a bit like a pirate. But then Susie Keys said that the white one was obviously the best because it was making a nest. So that's when Rose Morgan said that she didn't think bunnies made nests and Susie crossed her arms and said that they definitely did. And then Sunita Ram got involved because she always gets involved when there's an argument. But then all of a sudden, everyone stopped arguing about the nest because Jaden King squealed ah! and shouted, look. So we all followed his finger to where he was pointing. And that's when we saw that there weren't just four bunnies on the grassy bit anymore because there were 10. <gasps> that's when everyone started to panic because we had no idea where all the bunnies were coming from. And it definitely wasn't normal. Sunita Ram ran to get Miss Riley and when she'd managed to pull her over to the window there were 15 bunnies on the grassy bit. <gasps> Look at them all. Imagine looking out your window in primary school or at home and there being 15 bunnies on the grassy bit. Miss Riley got a really weird look on her face when she saw the bunnies and said she was going to get Mr Harris, the head teacher, and that's when we knew that this was serious. But by the time Mr Harris got there, there were 20 bunnies! Oh my goodness, look at them all! Dun, dun, dun. I'm not gonna tell you the rest, I'm not gonna tell you how it ends or how many bunnies there are by the end of the story. You will have to read it and take part in the Summer Reading Challenge to find out. Now, lots of people ask me, where do I get the ideas for my book for Wiggles Bottom Primary? Well, all my books pretty much are about primary school because I love primary school very, very much because I think primary school is probably the weirdest, most dramatic, scariest and funniest place ever. Now, I've travelled a lot, but I've never, ever, ever been somewhere as exciting as a primary school. Just think about it. All the weird places you get in primary schools that you don't really get everywhere else, or they're not the same. Like, the weird toilets. There's always a ghost in the toilet, isn't there? Hands up if there's definitely, definitely, definitely a ghost in your school. And there's a ghost that lives in the toilets. Well, there you go. The very first Wiggles Bottom Primary book that I wrote was inspired by the ghost that lived in the toilets at my primary school. So I called it The Toilet Ghost. Now, hands up, everybody watching, if you quite like to like, write stories or to draw stories. Good. Hands up if you like to do both, writing and drawing stories. 
Awesome. Well, I want you right now to shout out, to take a guess, what age do you think I was when I wrote Wiggles Bottom Primary, The Toilet Ghost? Now, nobody say 90 or 100 because I'm only 37 now, okay? So how old do you think I was? Do you think I was 30? 35? 20? 25? 18? 15? Shout out now. Is there anyone here who's eight? Yep, because that's how old I was when I wrote this book and I kept it for ages and ages and ages and ages and ages. And it was published just after I turned 30. So I would just like to say, and it's not really been changed a huge, mu a huge amount. The story is pretty much the same, all about a weird toilet in the very back of the toilet as it kind of flushes itself. And if it kind of sprays water up on you, that means that the ghost is there because the ghost is a bit of a menace. It likes to have fun and splash people. And if you write stories, I really do suggest that you hang on to them. Don't think, oh, that's not good enough because I'm only eight or I'm only 10 or I'm only 12. Because those stories that you write when you're wee, when you're younger, like I was, they're probably much more imaginative than some of the stuff that adults come up with. So keep hold of them and your drawings, keep them safe, like in a folder or in a shoebox or something. And do what I do and look them out when you're older and you never know, you might be able to turn it into a book. Now, I also get my ins loads of inspiration from primary school. I love primary schools. And as well as being a mummy and as well as being a children's author, I'm also a teacher. So I obviously love school. I've been in school since I was four and I've basically never left. But I love something else just as much and that is animals. I love animals. I've done loads of animals in my Wiggles Bottom stories. Look, we have this shark in the pool and that's just because I'm, I'm quite scared of sharks, but I'm also very interested about them, but still quite scared. And... Wiggles Bottom Primary Super Dog because I love dogs and I've had lots and lots of dogs since I was wee and because I think I love cats the most and I have two cats I did Wiggles Bottom Primary The Classroom Cat about a cat that sneakies into the classroom and every time the teacher's not looking it kind of goes away out the window again and then it sneaks down the branch of the tree outside and jumps onto our keyboard and writes them a secret message on the keyboard and then jumps out and then presses print so the secret message comes out and they can read it. What does Classroom Cat want to tell them? Oh, you'll have to read to find out. I'm gonna let you see my cats. I'm in my writing shed, by the way. Woo, this is like a very special occasion. I don't usually do events in here. This is my writing shed. Ah when I write most of my books. But to be honest, the probably my first 10 books were all written in the library. My first two, three, four, five books were all completely written in the library. After school, I'd go along to my local library and I would write there for two hours and then I would go home and have my tea and go to bed and then we'd get up and go to school again. And I had to work very, very hard um, to make sure that happened. But what made it easy was easier was working in the library it was lovely and wonderful. And I'm a massive, massive fan of libraries. And I know that you might be able to go to your actual library right now, but your libraries are still, the building isn't open, but the library librarians are there, the silly squad librarians are still there, so you can still phone, you can still email, you can still go on the internet, you can still get in touch and they can help you with the summer reading challenge and suggest lots of other books for you as well. So I'm very inspired by animals when I do my books, woo, and I'm going to show you my two cats. They can't come into the shed because they would jump on my head and my neck and the phone and the camera and all the lights, fairy lights would get pulled down because they're wild. So I have some cardboard cutouts to show you what they look like. This is Bear. Say hello to Bear. Meow. And this is Carlos, her brother. So this is Bear and Carlos. And Bear and Carlos really inspire so many of my stories, especially the classroom cat and Wiggles Bottom Primary. And they pop up in my Izzy series of books as well, which I'll tell you a little bit about in just a moment. I'm going to pop them down. Now, I love... I love dogs, but I've never had a pug, but I just love pugs so much. And I was lucky enough to get invited to go along to the Dundee Pug Party, which is basically a party in a park that happens once a month. And everybody who has a pug brings their pug along. And I got to meet 17 pugs. And the reason I went is because I put out an advert on the local radio asking anyone if they would let me spend a day with their pug, because I knew I wanted to write a book about pugs. So I had to do very serious research. It's very fun being an author sometimes. So I got to spend a day with 17 pugs. And at the end of it, I went home and came up with the idea of this pug and he is called Pugly. Hello. And he gets up to all sorts of things like he tries to bake a cake and enter like a big baking contest and that goes wrong. He tries to become the best ice skater in the world. And he also has to solve a very serious crime. Say bye bye for now, Pugly. Bye bye. <laughs> So I get my inspiration from lots of different places and I still think school is the big, big one for me as well as writing about 
Wigglesbottom Primary, I write about another school uh, that my main character Izzy goes to along with her three best friends, Jodie, Maisie and Zach. And I'm going to take off my silly squad ears and I'm going to put on some very fluffy and scary werewolf ears. Wow! Can we hear your best werewolf howl? Oh, that's hard to say. Your best werewolf howl that has to come from the teeny tiniest ends of your toes, right the way up your body and out through your fingertips. And you're going to give me a great big werewolf howl on the count of three. One, two, three. Oh, that was good. I want to do that again for me. One, two, three. Yes, well, the great thing about the Izzy series of books, there's one, for example, there's a werewolf in my tent. And look how gorgeous this one's. These ones are illustrated by Thomas Flint. And I'm very lucky to work with such wonderful illustrators, Becca and Tom. Now, in this one, they go on a school camping trip and it starts to go wrong. First of all, it's raining a lot, there's thunder and lightning, there's weird shadows that are showing up against their tent, the sausages that were raw go completely missing, and the new teacher that's come along to help them out is really, really tall, and she's really, really strong, and she seems to be getting angrier and angrier, and she's got a mono brow now overnight, which is kind of like where her eyebrows touch, and she's got very hairy legs, and then they hear howling in the night, and they suspect that there might be a werewolf on camp. But it's when they find the giant poo that they know that there's a werewolf, because no human could have done that, not even a teacher, that's when they know there's a werewolf on camp. And that book was inspired by going on camping trips and going on school trips and uh, when your imagination goes wild. I am going to now do a dramatic performance to show you probably what the biggest inspiration of my writing career has been. I have to take a deep breath because I have to pick up something that's quite frightening in order to tell you this. I will reveal to you the instrument which probably changed my life on one, two, three, Doo -doo! Ch -ch -ch! an ice cream scoop. Now I'm quite surprised that I'm able to hold this today without kind of sweating and stuff because I am actually quite frightened of ice cream scoops because when I was at primary school, you have to be patient when I tell the story so I get quite scared and sometimes I feel a bit sick. When I was at primary school, I was served shepherd's pie using an ice cream scoop twice a week, every week for seven years, primary one, primary two, primary three, primary four, primary five, primary six, primary seven, twice, oh my goodness, that's a lot of shepherd's pie. Now, I hope that the shepherd's pie at your school is delicious and lovely. The shepherd's pie that you get at home, I'm sure it is lovely and delicious, but the shepherd's pie at my primary school was not delicious, ever. Not in primary one, not any primaries, all the way through to primary seven. It kind of tasted a bit like dirty feet, smelly dirty feet, and washing up liquid mixed together. It was basically just like a brown soup sludge thing with bits of unidentified meat just kind of like bumbling over each other. And they used to serve it with this. They'd pick it up, it would all drip down. I don't even know why they used this. They should have used, I don't know, like a like a cup or something or because it was so watery and they would go onto your plate. Now, that shepherd's pie was so, so bad that when I first started writing books about primary school, I, uh, used to read books that kind of helped you how to be a writer and gave you tips like I'm trying to do with you now. Tips about what to think about and how to how to imagine things and remember things from when you were younger. And it made me just think loads and loads about one of the worst things at primary school, which was that scary shepherd's pie. And before I knew it, I had written a whole book called The Spy Who Loves School Dinners. And then another one called Attack of the Demon Dinner Ladies. And I'm going to do a dramatic performance to show you how much we didn't like the shepherd's pie at my primary school. So I'm going to go to my dressing room and get changed and I'm going to just put some music on for you uh, as you wait for me to return. Are you ready? One, two, three, beep. Da -da 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 Hello, I am back and I am in character. I am dressed as one of the scary dinner ladies from my primary school. So one day we were in our class and it was a time for dinner. We knew it was time for dinner because the lunch bell had gone. So our teacher was like, Miss Lady was like, okay, let's go, let's go. So out we go. 
And our teacher used to make us hold hands when we went down to dinner. She had to go on twos and you had to hold hands. I'm not sure if your teachers do that or not, but they used to make us do that. And I got to hold hands with my best friend Jodie, so that was fine. Because I didn't want to hold hands with some other people. I didn't want to hold hands with some of the boys uh, because some of them had sweaty hands and I didn't like that. Um, so anyway, um, we were standing outside and I held onto Jodie's hand and we started to walk. And as we were walking towards, she gripped my hand really, really tightly. And I could feel that her hand was actually sweating, just like some of the boys' hands would sweat. But it was kind of weird. It was like a cold sweat. And I knew that something was wrong because I think that happens when you're scared. And I turned and looked at her and her face looked completely white. And she was kind of shaking a bit and she was going, no, 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 not today. No, no, no. And even though I couldn't smell a thing yet, I knew what she was going to say. She was going to say that she could smell the shepherd's pie because Jodie had the best sense of smell in our whole primary school and probably all the primary schools ever. So we walked a bit further and she was gripping my hand really tight and it was getting tighter and tighter and she turned to me and I said, Jodie, don't say it, don't say it. And she went, I can smell the shepherd's pie. And we were like, no! And it went off for a really, really long time. And it went off for so long that we actually got a detention after it. And even when we got told the detention, we still kind of went, no! because we were really scared about the shepherd's pie. So anyway, we were going down and then that's when I was able to smell it and I was holding her hand and we were shaking because that's how bad it is. And we went into the dinner hall and we went up and you had to go up in single file and you had to take a tray and the dinner ladies were standing there waiting for us. Aprons on, hair nets on, and they were holding their ice cream scoops high up in the sky, like they just didn't care, staring at us. So we had to go up and pick a tray and go up and the dinner ladies kind of looked down at us and they said, one scoop or two. And I said, zero scoops, no scoops. And she said, don't you be so cheeky. And I thought, oh no, she's going to give me two scoops because I said that. One, two, and then she got an evil look in her eye and her hand went up in the air and it went down into the shepherd's pie and up and I knew that she was about to give me three lumps of shepherd's pie and it went down and hit the table, hit the plate on the, like, and I was like, no! And that's when I learned that I should have just said one scoop. So I ended up with three scoops of shepherd's pie and I sat down and I was upset. And I should have also told you, we had an evil dinner, uh, dinner monitor called Mrs. Kidd and her job was to go around all the tables looking really closely at everyone and making sure that you were eating every single scrap. And she made me eat it all! And it's one of the scariest experiences of my life, but... It's also quite funny now that I'm older and I don't really eat shepherd's pie anymore and I probably will never again, even though some people have made me have it since I've written these books. But it gave me inspiration to write these books. So you don't have to just write about something lovely, like a lovely holiday that you went on or a lovely day that you had. You can actually write about something that was disastrous or went really, really, really wrong. But then you can change it a bit and make it funny. So if you and your family or your class went on a trip and it went all wrong, because maybe somebody was on the bus and the toilet and they couldn't wait, so they ended up just having to go to the toilet on the bus. And it's a horrible story, but maybe you could make it really, really funny. Not with making fun of anyone or anything like that, because that's not funny, but maybe you could introduce things that didn't happen. Like maybe there's a monkey, who knows? Maybe there's a pug on the bus. If it was a family camping trip you went on, it went wrong, maybe you could add bits and pieces in like werewolves and stuff like that. So some ideas for you. Now I'm going to set you a bit of a challenge. If you enjoy reading and stories and silliness and fun, being part of the Scottish Silly Squad, then I think that you should take me up on a challenge, which is, I'm gonna show you some, so I'm very excited, I'm looking around at all my props, which you can't see, which I can see thinking, oh, which ones will I show you? I'm gonna show you some things and I would be really happy if those helped you to come up with ideas for stories, because that's what I'm gonna do. So I am going to go back to my dressing room. and I'm going to come back and show you some props. So if I have a weird object in my kind of eye line, if I see something weird in a shop, sometimes it gives me like a whole idea for a story. For example, I have this in my house and I don't even really know what it is. It's a weird orange egg. I do think it's a music -y thing, but I can't remember buying it. I can't remember anybody giving me it and I don't know how it got here. So it freaks me out a little bit. Maybe you could write a story about this strange orange egg just kind of popping up one day out of nowhere. Or what about tiny little aliens, maybe a mummy alien and a baby alien. Or a pug who says a magic word and turns to complete 
stone or silver. That's expensive. What about a long haired guinea pig? Hello, look how cute. Or maybe one day there's a smell in the fridge and you just know that your mum or dad or carer or brother or sister or granny, whoever you live with at home, they've bought that smelly cheese again. What do you call it? Carmen poo? Carmen bleh? Carmen bear? And you take it out and you say, no, I'm putting this smelly cheese in the bin. I've had enough. Then you open it. Oh, and you find out there's a teeny tiny mouse that lives in there in a Carmen bear house. And you could write a story all about a teeny tiny mouse in a Carmen bear house. It's actually quite good. You should write that sooner or I might steal that back. Anything else? Well, what about for those of you who like quite scary things? Maybe there's a scary character, maybe an old fashioned ghost from the past. Let me see if there's something downstairs in my shed. Whoa, look at this, an old fashioned Teacher's hat from olden, oh, this one's broken, from olden times. Does anybody here think they could write a story about an old teacher ghost that comes back? Whoa. Or an alien, a werewolf. Those are really scary. Or maybe even, A ghost! And what makes ghosts extra scary, if you want to dress up at home when you're doing stories, is to get a torch and to put the torch under your chin. I don't know if you can see this here. Ooh. Or if you don't have a sheet at home that you're allowed to cut eye holes in, allowed to cut eye holes in, you can just get a torch like this or one on your phone or your mum and dad's phone or your carer's phone and you can put it under your face and you can make really scary faces with the torch. Now, I want to share a tip with you that I found out when I was starting to write and that tip is how to start a story because sometimes one of the hardest things to do when you're writing a book is to start it. So I learned something really cool when I was learning and that is that instead of starting a book with once upon a time or telling maybe a long story about what the character looks like or saying it was a lovely sunny day, you should actually start the book right in the middle of the action at a really exciting bit. So for example, you could say, I heard a really weird noise. It was coming from my drawer. I opened my drawer and that's when I saw an orange egg. And you could explain that you've got no idea how it came to be there. You don't know where it came from. What else could the orange egg do? Could it speak? Could it communicate through shakes? Oh. Another great story starter is something kind of scary that happens like with the weather, I think, like thunder and lightning. So something like, all of a sudden, there was a flash of lightning and I looked at the window and saw, or I woke up because there was a knock on my window, which was strange because I live on the 25th floor. <gasps> I've got somebody knock on your window if you live on the 25th floor. Another thing, the last thing I'm going to leave you with, another thing I like to do, and you can do this with your teacher or with your parents or carers, whoever you live with, is look at funny pictures on the internet. I've never written stories about these pictures yet, but I definitely might, and I think you definitely should. So I'm going to show you this one. This is one of the funniest photographs I've ever found on the internet, and sometimes just a photo can give me an idea for a book. Are you ready? One of my favourites ever. Look! Look at these dogs in the car. I don't know if you can see, but there's actually three dogs in the back, as well as these two. Now, Look how happy this dog is. And look how grumpy. I think there's definitely a story there. Somebody needs to write it. Hands up if you think these are goodies. They're dog cops. Hands up if you think they're baddies and they've stolen the car. Hands up if you know exactly why that one's grumpy and that one's smiling. Is it because he's driving and he's not? Or is it something else? Mmm. What about this one? Look! It's Batcat. Hands up if you think Batcat's a goodie. Hands up if you think he's a baddie. Hands up if you think you could write or draw a story all about Bad Cat and what he gets up to. <laughs> I bet you could. Now, the last one. This is, this is definitely my favourite one. I always forget about this one. I found this one. And when I first looked at this photograph, I didn't see what I was meant to be seeing. It's a real photograph. And then I spotted it. So let's see if you can, how quickly you can notice it as well. Have you spotted it yet? Look. This lady's got baby faces in her knees. Look, looks like two little baby heads. Hands up if you could write a story about that. Maybe the babies pop out of her knees at night like bouncy balls. Hands up if you think it's good babies, 
bad babies, hands up everything. It's one good baby and one bad baby. Good baby and evil baby. <laughs> Well, I hope you've enjoyed a little sneak peek of Break Time Bunnies, which is on the Summer Reading Challenge list this year, which is very exciting. And learning about where I come up from the ideas for the other ones, about my cats and pets and little objects. Sometimes if you get an idea from a crisp, you can use a bag of crisps, or you can use anything really, an apple, a banana. Sometimes they're odd shapes and it can give you a wee idea. I hope that you're able to come up with your own idea using one of the props that I have shown you. And I hope that you will join the Scottish Silly Squad and sign up for the Scottish um, Summer Reading Challenge. Well, join up, sorry, for the Summer Reading Challenge. I know your libraries are shut, but you can still contact your librarians. Your Silly Squad librarians are on hand to help you in this very silly mission. I've been Pamela Butcher. You've been wonderful. I hope you love this summer. Thank you so much. Bye.